Hi, and welcome to episode seven of Metastatic Modernity. I'm Tom Murphy, and in this episode, I'm going to try and probably fail to convey the full degree to which Earth's biodiversity and ecological health are in peril. This is our next and probably most critical step in putting modernity into context. So I'll start with a reminder that humans are one of about 10 million species. We're all in this together. We're not the pinnacle of evolution. We're not a keystone species supporting a vast web, ecological web. In fact, we're kind of busy ripping it apart, it should be noted. If we look at the biomass of mammals, it tells a bit of a story in that 95% of all mammal mass is in the form of humans and our domesticated animals, really squeezing the wilds into the corners. Only 2% of mammal mass is wild land mammals. And the following is not a serving suggestion, um, and it's not how ecology works, but if you were to take an equal mass among all the roughly 5,000 species of mammals, it would result in humans being about 4 million in population. But that gives you a sense to the degree of skew in the human numbers. If we look at the breakdown of the wild populations, this is what they look like. We have about 20 megatons or million tons of wild land mammal mass, the green wedge. And to put that into context, if we split that among 8 billion people, that ends up being about 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds per person. So think about that. That's smaller than a domestic cat. And that is your allocation, in a sense, of wild land mammal mass on this planet. It's really tiny. But how's that looked over time? Here's a plot that shows it. It used to be about a thousand times or more as much land mammal mass as human mass. And that flipped over around 1880 where humans became dominant in mass over the entire set of wild land mammals. And it's really plunged ever since then. So this is a logarithmic plot which really exaggerates the or reveals the low-lying uh, parts whereas you know this stuff over on the right would be down to zero on a linear plot you wouldn't even see it so here you actually get to see what's happening you see this nosedive and on a logarithmic plot that's pretty frightening um, this is the ecological cliff edge on a linear scale in recent times this is what it looks like we're sort of cruising towards zero it's almost gone and it's a story of both human population growing and mammal mass decline. So mammal mass has declined to about 30% what it was in the year 1900. So think about that. In, in a little more than a century, we've wiped out the vast majority. And I'm worried about that because do you think we're capable of finishing the job? I mean, you know, yes, we probably are capable. So let's be really careful not to. I focused on mammals partly because that's what we are and we have a lot of affinity for and identity with, um, identify with mammals. Um, but it's kind of across the board. We've got insects declining at one to 2% per year. That's a real foundation of ecosystem health for food and pollination and other services, um, nutrient spreading, all kinds of things but also similar declines in birds and fish and probably not unrelated. I mean, birds eat a lot of insects. And one to 2% per year might not seem very dramatic, but that really adds up and it amounts to about a three quarters loss over a century. So it really can hit pretty hard, pretty fast. Now in 1970, a big study of tens of thousands of vertebrate populations, not just mammals was begun and they found that since 1970, the average population decline has been something like 70%. So this is really big and it's sort of in line with these other numbers of one to 2% per year. Now, population declines that serious are kind of on the road toward extinction. I mean, before extinction, you, you whittle down your population to almost nothing. So, um, that's uh, showing up in rates of extinctions about 100 to 1,000 times the background and uh, super concerning. So 
The ecological web of life is fairly resilient, but it has its limits, and when pushed beyond the limits can have cascading failures that really just kind of shred the web of life, and that's something that we ought to all be concerned about. So this all creates a credible concern that we're witnessing or really causing uh, the beginning of a sixth mass extinction. So Earth has basically been slapped really hard and really fast, and it's too soon to appreciate the full impact because these things take a long time to ripple through the community of life as they uh, try to adjust to it and maybe are gliding toward extinction. So meantime, large, complex, hungry, uh, high-maintenance animals like ourselves don't tend to fare well in mass extinction scenarios. So even if you're only um, concerned about yourself or ourselves, and I hope you see value in the rest of the community of life, but even if it's only self-interest, this is bad. This is bad for humans. So just keep in mind that we're not ecologically separate. There's no such thing. Other episodes have touched on that. What are the causes of this? calamity well it's a lot of things it's a big list i mean it's actually fairly simple things like deforestation and habitat loss and fragmenting habitats or mining and, and uh, manufacturing and the associated pollutions um, infrastructure encounters like um, uh, you know roadkill um, overhunting overfishing introduction of other invasive species, a lot of domestic animals and plants have wiped out uh, native habitats. Um, pesticides, you know, herbicides, ecocide, a lot of sides. And climate change is part of the story and it does impact biodiversity. It interacts with all the others too because, for instance, um, maybe an animal or plant would want to slowly move into a new territory. Uh, the plants don't themselves move, but their seeds can. But if the habitat is fragmented, they might be blocked off from that. And so it's kind of a, a double bind. Um, so climate change, though, I want to see is not as a root cause of this. It's, one, it's on the list. It's really from the same root cause of modernity. And if we eliminated climate change today, which I sure wish we could, we'd still be in very deep trouble on this front. Okay, I'm going to end this episode with a gallery of images captured uh, stills from a film by Jeff Gibbs called Planet of the Humans, which I recommend uh, these images with permission, that help tell the story. And I'll warn that this is pretty tough and disturbing to me, and if you are... Uh, have trouble tolerating animals suffering, seeing animals suffer, uh, then you might want to uh, end this video here. So we start with a rainforest that's being slashed and burned for some other human purpose. And what that leaves in its wake is this kind of wasteland where a rainforest used to be. And here we see a small orangutan up in the second nook in this tree that has just lost its whole world. I mean, its life-giving rainforest is just gone in the name of human progress and development. And now here we see a young orangutan caked in mud, having just a hard time, in a bad way, trying to get out of a ditch. And watching this video is really tough because it's clearly frustrated and just at its wit's end, and it, it really breaks my heart. It eventually gets up on out of the ditch and, and is dying. It's still breathing, but it's emaciated. It's not long for this world. And, you know, she did nothing wrong, but didn't stand a chance. And this is part of what modernity is doing. And that's really tough. Um, it's hard to even know how to go on from that. That's just, that's a real thing. It's devastating. It's not the only example. It's it's um, widespread. Um, we have to understand it, though, to understand the costs of modernity. Okay, so next time we're going to work on packaging various perspectives on timelines to see just how almost instantaneous this whole modernity thing has been and how shocking it has been to the system. And in the meantime, as always, I 
recommend that you look at the companion piece to this on Do the Math, a more coherent and polished form of this presentation. Until next time, then.